Good morning, sisters and brothers. Welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is uh, Wednesday morning, Wednesday the, the 14th, uh, yes, the 14th of July. And so we are grateful to God for giving us another day, a new day that, he, that we have never seen before and shall never see again. And so we ask God's grace to sustain us today and to empower us by his Holy Spirit so that we may live for Christ uh, today again afresh so let us let us pray as we come to begin this new day O Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise <clears throat> and the canticle from Isaiah 55 return to the Lord you who who will have mercy to our God who will richly pardon seek the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts return to the Lord who will have mercy to our God who will richly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts as the rain and the snow come down from above and return not again but water the earth bringing forth life and giving growth seed for sowing and bread to eat so is my word that goes forth from my mouth it will not return to me fruitless but it will accomplish that which i purpose and succeed in the task i gave it glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever amen return to the lord who will have mercy to our god who will richly pardon the night has passed and the day lies open before us let us pray with one heart and mind as we rejoice in the gift of this new day so may the light of your presence O god set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever amen and the collect for today almighty and everlasting god we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> okay. Our psalm this morning, Psalm 119, Psalm 119, from verse 153 to the end. <coughs> psalm 119. From verse 153. Look on my sorrow and deliver me, for I have not forgotten your law. Defend my cause and redeem me. Preserve my life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek out your decrees. Your compassion, Lord, is great. Preserve my life according to your laws. Many are the foes who persecute me, but I have not turned from your statutes. I look on the faithless with loathing, but they do not obey your word. See how I love your precepts. Preserve my life, Lord, in accordance with your word. All your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. 
<clears throat> Rulers persecute me without cause, but my heart trembles at your word. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds spoil. <clears throat> I hate and detest falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. I wait for your salvation, Lord, and I follow your commands. I obey your statutes, for I love them greatly. I obey your precepts and statutes, for all my ways are known to you. May my cry come before you, Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. May my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. May my lips overflow with praise for you teach me your decrees may my tongue sing of your word for all your commands are righteous may your hand be ready to help me for I have chosen your precepts I long for your salvation Lord and your law gives me delight let me live that I may praise you and may your laws sustain me. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. Amen. <clears throat> of course, as you know, Psalm 119 is the longest of psalms, and it is also the psalm that is the meditation on the Word of God. It is the longest psalm, and the longest psalm is about God's word. The psalmist uses various synonyms for God's word, word, law, precepts, uh, commands, statutes, and promise even, the word promise as well. All of these words reflect something about God's word, and it's a Psalm 119 is a good psalm to study, to meditate on uh, sometime because it, <clears throat> it really brings out the different flavors, you could say, of God's word. But this little section that we are given this morning from 153 to the end, again, speaks of volumes about the word, but just to pick out a few 160, all your words are true. Your righteous laws are eternal. All your words are true. God's word is trustworthy. Every word from God is true and righteous. Um, God doesn't lie, sisters and brothers. God doesn't tell falsehood. All God's word is true. Psalm 161 um, my heart trembles at your word. My heart trembles at your word. And um, 162, I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil, treasure. Uh, uh, the, the psalmist says, I rejoice in your word like one who finds treasure. You know, again, just search our hearts, sisters and brothers. Do we have this kind of passion for the word? Do we rejoice at God's word like one who finds treasure? Do you, do you rejoice at the word of God as you would if you win the lottery? That's the point. As one who finds spoil, great spoil, treasure. If you win the lottery tomorrow, you'll have a celebration. Do you celebrate the word of God in the same way? Um, let me read Keller's meditation. I'll read the very last one. He calls it the powerful word. Psalm 119 has given us many directions about what to do with the scripture. 
We are to read, learn, and understand it, to meditate on, memorize, and follow it. We are to take time to do, to do this morning and night without fail, to do this morning and night without fail. But all this is in vain unless God seeks you as you read his word. The word of God is alive and active, penetrating and healing like a surgeon's knife. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. But you aren't sure about the Bible's trustworthiness. And or if you have friends who aren't sure, just give yourselves to reading it. Even if you don't believe a, 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 bit, a knife is sharp, if it is, it will still cut you. Amen. Um, Keller said something here, but all this is in vain unless God seeks you as you read his word. That bit, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's so important because as you seek God's word, God will seek your heart. You know, God will find your heart wherever that heart is. So as you seek God, God seeks you. The prayer, Lord, here is the wonderful mirror, your word that mends the looker's eyes. This is the well that washes what it shows. Who can endear its praise too much? What healing, shaping power it has. Let me eagerly give myself to your word today and every day. Amen. Amen. Just a second. Okay, our reading this morning is from Ezekiel chapter 12, verses 1 to 16. Ezekiel chapter 12, 1 to 16. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house who have eyes to see but not see, who have ears to hear but not hear. They have, for they are a rebellious house. As for you, son of man, prepare for yourself an exile's baggage and go into exile by day in their sight. You shall go like an exile from your place to another place in their sight. Perhaps they will understand, though they are a rebellious house. You shall bring out your baggage by day in their sight, as baggage for exile, and you shall go out yourself at evening in their sight, as those who do, uh, for those as those do who must go into exile. In their sight, dig through the wall. And bring your baggage out through it. In their sight you shall lift the baggage upon your shoulder and carry it out at dusk. You shall cover your face that you may not see the land. For I have made you a sign for the house of Israel. And I did as I was commanded. I brought out my baggage by day as baggage for exile. And in the evening I dug through the wall with my own hands. I brought out my baggage at dusk, carrying it on my shoulder in their sight. In the morning the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, has not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said to you, What are you doing? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God. <coughs> <coughs> This oracle concerns the prince in Jerusalem and all the house of Israel who are in it. Say, I am a sign for you. As I have done, so shall it be done to them. They shall go into exile, into captivity. And the prince who is among them shall, shall lift his... And the prince who is among them shall lift his baggage upon his shoulder at dusk and shall go out. They shall dig through the wall to bring him out through it. 
He shall cover his face that he may not see the land with his eyes. And I will spread my net over him and he shall be taken in my snare. And I will bring him to Babylon, the land of the Chaldeans. Yet he shall not see it and he shall die there. And I will scatter toward every wind all who are around him, his helpers and all his troops. And I will unsheathe the sword after them. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I disperse them among the nations and scatter them among the countries. But I will let a few of them escape from the sword from famine and pestilence, that they may declare all their abominations among the nations where they go, and may know that I am the Lord. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> so, Ezekiel, we come again to Ezekiel. This Ezekiel, sisters and brothers, um, God gives him um he, he's to act out his prophecies it's like he's, he's he's to dramatize some of his prophecies um in this in this particular instance god tells him um instead of speaking he's to act it out act out what god is going to do so he's to get up in the morning pack his bags as if he's going on a long journey in fact he's going into exile He's called it his exile's bag. <clears throat> and the people are to come and watch him pack. I need to spend all day packing. <clears throat> and then in the evening he's to leave. But he's not to leave through a door. He's to bo bore a, a hole in the wall. Take out the bricks of the wall. Knock the wall, you know, a, a, a hole in the wall. And then go through that hole to leave the town, to leave the house, to leave the area. And all of that, God is, God is teaching the people what is going to happen to the, to the people in Jerusalem. Now remember, <coughs> Ezekiel is in exile. Some of the, 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 God's people are in exile, but not all of them. A considerable amount still live in, uh, in, in, in Jerusalem, in, in Judea. In fact, the temple is still standing. The king is still there. The king, his king, king's name was Zedekiah. And Zedekiah was a king that was put on the throne by the Babylonian king. And, um, and, and so the king is there. He is the one who is referred to here as the prince. The, um, uh, it, it says... Um, uh, can't see it now. Oh yes, verse 12. And the prince who is among them shall lift his baggage upon his shoulder at dusk and shall go out. The prince is the, is the king. And so the, what, what Ezekiel is dramatizing, this is what God said is going to happen in Jerusalem. To the prince, to the king, Zedekiah, and to the people. So they are going to get their baggage. They are going to leave Jerusalem. But they're not going to leave by the door, as it were, leaving to go on a holiday. They're going to, they're going to, be, they're going to be forced out. That's the hole in the wall. They're going to be pushed out through the, through, through the destruction of the, the temple, the destruction of the city. They are going to be, you know, there's going to be a hole that is, that is, um, that, that is bored into the wall. Of Jerusalem and that's how the people are going to they're gonna leave through exile they're gonna leave as prisoners they're not gonna leave in an normal sense and then and then there's another bit where he said that um they are going to uh, th th yes you, you're to cover your face he you shall cover his face what is that the covering of the face means that you're not gonna see where you're going uh, you know, you, you, Ezekiel is to cover his his face, um, put something over his face so he doesn't see where he's going. <clears throat> that, sisters and brothers, was actually a prophecy about 
Zedekiah because Zedekiah is going to be blind. Um, the king of Babylon is going to blind the king of, of Israel, of Judea. And he's not going to be able to see uh, where he's going. And, uh, and all of that is part of this prophecy. So, so Ezekiel is enacting this prophecy, dramatizing what is going to happen to the believers, to the people of God in Jerusalem. And it's a reminder to our sisters and brothers that God's judgment is coming on God's people. And God is bringing that judgment. And God is using the Babylonians as his instrument. Again, Ezekiel is prophesying to the people in exile about what is going to happen to the remainder of the people over in Jerusalem. Uh, because the people in exile, well, you know, the, the Babylonians came and, and took some of the people in exile. Um, Daniel was one of those people. Uh, Ezekiel was another. And, and, but, but the temple was still standing. Jerusalem was still there. There were still people left there. But the, 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 this prophecy, uh, this drama, dram, dramatized prophecy, is, uh, is Ezekiel telling the people that this is not going to be lasting forever. It, uh, God is going to finally get, um, bring judgment on the remainder of the people in Jerusalem. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we come this morning in your name, seeking your grace. Lord, because we... We can do nothing without you. In our strength, we are helpless. In our power, we are powerless. We are helpless to overcome the temptations of the world, the sinful nature, and the devil. So, Lord, we need your, <clears throat> we need your help. We need your grace. We need the power and presence of your Holy Spirit to empower us today, to hear from you, to obey you, to live for you, to serve you with all that is in us, in our hearts, soul, mind, and strength. And so Lord, hear us we pray this morning as we start this new day. Lord, we are grateful for your mercy and grace this new day. And so, Lord, our, our God, <clears throat> strengthen us, we pray, as we seek to serve you today. <clears throat> Help us, Lord, to treasure your word like we treasure, treasure, like we treasure spoil, like we treasure other precious things in our lives. Give us grace to, to, to treasure your word today. <clears throat> the Lord, even as we we, we listen to Ezekiel's uh, prophecy of, of, of punishment and, 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 and exile for the people, Lord, we are reminded that judgment begins with your people. And so, Lord, we pray that you will uh, preserve us from judgment, Lord, through through the the blood of Christ, uh, forgive us for when we fail, uh, so that we will not be brought into judgment. Enter not into judgment with your servant, O Lord, for no one living is righteous in your sight. And yet, Lord, through Christ, you have made us righteous. You have called us into your presence you have made a covenant with us not because in anything in us but because of what Christ has done for us and so Lord strengthen us today strengthen our feeble knees and our, and our weak hands and our <clears throat> and our shallow hearts today Lord give us the strength we need Lord to serve you to live for you today this new day and so Lord whatever it is that we are doing today we ask that you will guide us watch over us protect us on our journey 
and keep us safe from all that's evil. Give us grace to rise above all the temptations of this world and give us the strength to endure the fiery trials that we go through in this life and that we may grow stronger as we endure the trials that come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. <clears throat> Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation that among the changes and chances of this mortal life we may <clears throat> we may always be defended by your gracious help through jesus christ our lord amen christ be with me christ within me christ behind me christ before me christ beside me christ to win me christ to comfort and restore me Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers, whatever you're doing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, one and all.